Welcome back guys. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the differences between an AR-15 rifle, pistol, or SBR. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so what prompted me to do this video is I had a customer who's actually a buddy of mine um, have a lower receiver sent to me that was complete. And then he also brought over the complete upper that he was going to put on it. And the configuration he was going to do is actually illegal to do unless you register it as a short barreled rifle. So he was unaware of the gun laws with that. And so I figured there's other people that might not be aware of that. So I would kind of just do a quick video discussing the differences. So this is in reference to an AR-15 setup, since so many people are building them on their own. This is just so how you guys can be aware of the legalities of however you put it together. So the ATF has actually defined what they consider a rifle, a short barreled rifle, or a pistol. And then there's also an other firearm classification as well. So in order for a firearm to be considered a rifle, um, the barrel has to be 16 inches or longer. So right here, you'll see I have an AR-15 that has a 16 inch barrel. So since this is classified as a rifle, we are allowed to have the adjustable rifled stock on here that's meant to be shouldered. Now, depending on your state, I know some states get a little finicky um, on what they allow, but this is for the more gun friendly states as far as what um, is considered, especially under the ATF. So in this setup, this is classified as a rifle and you're allowed to have the adjustable rifled stock. What they classify as a pistol or an SBR is any firearm that has a barrel length under 16 inches would then be classified as a short barreled rifle if you have an adjustable rifle stock on there. Now you can change it to where it's classified as a pistol. It would still have to have a barrel under 16 inches but there's a configuration you can do to make it classified as a pistol and then you don't have to register it as an SBR. So what my buddy did is he ordered um, a lower and an upper from Palmetto State Armory. He had the lower shipped to me to do the transfer and the upper was sent to him directly since it doesn't have a serial number. Anything that's not serialized can be shipped straight to your house, whether it's a parts, complete upper, anything like that that can be shipped straight to your house. So when he came over to do the paperwork on the lower, um, he brought the upper as well and was gonna show me that he was gonna put this seven inch upper on this lower receiver that you'll see has an adjustable rifle stock on it. So I let him know that as that set up, if he were to put this upper on this lower, that would be illegal unless he actually registered it as a short barreled rifle under the ATF. So I told him he had two options was to do that, or he could turn it into a pistol classification. So, um, if you wanted to turn this into a short barreled rifle, that is legal. So you would just have to fill out the form and submit it to the ATF that takes anywhere from a month up to, you know, 10 months or whatever. So it does take some time and then you have to pay a $200 tax stamp as well. And then once that gets approved, you can then mount your upper with a less than 16 inch barrel on a lower that has an adjustable rifled stock. So that would be registered under the NFA Act as a short barreled rifle. And then you would have a tax stamp to go along with this. So that would be one way to legally own this gun as that setup. However, he chose not to go with that route. He wanted to convert the lower into a pistol. So what I had him do is he bought a pistol stabilizing brace and there's several, several different brands and companies that make them, but he went with SB Tactical their SBA three brace. Um, they have some other different models out there as well, but this is the one that he went with. So if you put the stabilizing brace on the lower receiver in place of this adjustable rifle stock, then that would classify it as a pistol and not a short barreled rifle. So I'm actually going to do that for him. I will do a, another video where I install this. He also has the folding stock adapter, which you can actually put on a pistol. So that will be going on there as well which I'll post a link into this description once I have that video put together. So they, there is another configuration where they have pistol buffer tubes that you can have, and it's just a straight buffer tube with no stock. And that would in turn also be classified as a pistol because a pistol they define is meant to be shot one handed. So 
the stabilizing braces kind of fit into that category because they're not meant to be shouldered. They're meant to actually um, fit on your forearm to stabilize the pistol as you shoot it. So that way you can shoot it one handed. Obviously a lot of people choose not to attach this to their forearm, but you just want to make sure that you don't continuously shoulder this uh, pistol brace that you want to make sure that it's not touching your shoulder the whole time. You can make a little bit of contact or, you know, get some cheek weld going there. You just can't continuously do that because then you get into a gray area. So that is the second option that he chose to do, um, you, you know, with the straight buffer tube, you'll run into that issue to where um, you can't really get a good cheek weld on there or anything like that, but you're technically not supposed to because it's a pistol. So, um, so yeah, that's basically the uh, gist of it. There's some other stuff that comes into play that is for another video, but that just depends on the overall length of the gun at that point, whether it's a rifle or short barrel rifle or pistol. So that's a different video because there's a lot of gray areas on what is actually part of the gun and where you measure it so but for this video it's just how you want to set up your ar-15 and which way you want to go so again if you want to set it up with a adjustable shoulder stock you need a barrel length of 16 inches or longer like this one or if you do put the under 16 inch barrel on there with the folding stock you'll have to register that as an SBR under the NFA Act with um, a $200 tax stamp. Or you can also convert this into a pistol by putting on a stabilizing brace on there, and then you can put any barrel length on there that's under 16 inches, and you're good to go because it's classified as a pistol. So, and again, depending on your state, they might have other laws that may change those things, but this is just in regards to most of the gun friendly states out there as to how they classify it. So um, if you guys found this video helpful um, or have any other questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll see if I can answer any questions that you guys have. You can also do a Google search. ATF has a section on their website with the classifications and everything like that and what you can and cannot do with the AR-15 pistol. So uh, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel so we can keep bringing you guys content like this and then you'll also be notified as we come out with new stuff. So thanks for watching.